I guess you love movies. I do too. Hi guys, and welcome back to another segment in my favourite movies. Um, it's been a little while. Uh, the last time I spoke about 2001 A Space Odyssey, one of my favourite science fiction films of all time. And today I talk about another one of my favourite sci-fi films. And with Blade Runner 2049 coming very soon, uh, directed this time by Denise Villeneuve, um, and I'm very much anticipating that, but I'm trying to keep my expectations as muted as possible, even though I've been very impressed with uh, Villeneuve's work um, over the years with Prisoners, um, <clears throat> and most recently Arrival. Um, I also really enjoyed um, Sicario, which I thought was also an excellent film. Um, but today I'm here to talk about the original Blade Runner, um, which celebrates its 35th anniversary this year. Um, and it hasn't aged a day, and it's one of my all-time favourite films. So I'm going to talk about how I first saw it, um, and how I grew to love, in my opinion, one of the greatest uh, science, science fiction films of all time. And the first person that showed the, me this film was my dad. Uh, my dad showed me it, I don't know, maybe about ten or so years ago now, when I was, wasn't very old, um, and he bought the... Um, the final cut version. I've never seen any of the other cuts. Um, I have wanted to see the director's cut with the Harrison Ford voiceover, but I've never um, got around to seeing it. So really, this is a review of the final cut, and um, it's not even a review; it's just a talk through. But you know what I mean. Um, so I thought, saw that when I was a kid, and I didn't really get it. I wasn't really concentrated on it. Um, I wasn't really anywhere near as into movies then as you would imagine, being around eight. So I didn't grasp it. I didn't get it. Um, and a few years later I watched it again, and I liked it, and then I watched it again, and again, and again, over the years, and it only gets better for me. I, I get things new out of it every single time I watch it, and I think um, a lot to do with that is just the depth that Ridley Scott created in this world. Um, it feels so real. It feels like a real place. Um, the way he explores social and industrial decay, um, the creation of artificial intelligence, our use for it. Um, Earth at this point is almost like, you know, if you're still on Earth, there's something wrong with you, or you've chosen to stay there. Um, and obviously, um, Deckard, played by Harrison Ford, is a Blade Runner, someone that hunts down rogue um, AI or... Um, or replicants, as they're called, obviously, in Blade Runner. Um, the newest model, um, the Nexus 6, um, and four uh, of these things has escaped um, from one of the uh, ships outside the, um, outside the colonies that have been um, colonised after the Earth's decay. Um, and there are some truly great performances here, um, from Rutger Hauer especially, who I think is magnetic in this. Um, as Roy Batty, and I think I don't think he's ever been better. Uh, um, I can't think of any role that he's even really got close to being as good as he is in this. It's his personal favourite of his own performances, and I think he's amazing. Um, the final scenes of Blade Runner are some of the some of the greatest I've ever seen in movies. Um, everything from the direction to the mood, the tone, um, the the grey blues, the the, the tone and everything about that finale is incredible to me. Um, not just the obvious and iconic um, Tears in Rain monologue, which is one of the great scenes of all time to me. It's one of my favourites of all time. Um, it's one of those acute um, and small, um, part of a small group of scenes in movies that I truly, truly love beyond anything. Um, it's emotional. Um, it's meaningful, it speaks about what it means to be human, the ability to be um, compassionate, the ability to be merciful, um, and I feel like um, it has a lot of obviously religious symbolism and stuff, um, and I feel like that final scene is one of the most powerful, and probably easily the most powerful in the film. Um, Harrison Ford, who is one of my favourite actors, He's good in this movie, don't get me wrong. Um, he is very good, but he's kind of subdued. He isn't quite as um, 
charismatic as he is in other roles, but that's the whole point. He's not supposed to be. His character is a bit more subdued, a little bit more clinical. But he still plays the role really well, and I can't really imagine anyone else doing it. Um, but really, it's Rutger Hauer's movie. Um, I also like um, Sean Young a lot in this film. I think she's really good as the sort of femme fatale um, in this film. Obviously, she's not knowing that she's a replicant. Um, and that's another thing that I think is really beautiful and tragic in the same way. Is that what if you didn't tell these replicants that they weren't rep that they were a replicant? Because they're so human that they would never realise it on their own. Um, living your entire life <coughs> uh, a lie, which I th I think is quite tragic. Um, and I think this is what elevates Blade Runner above just a cool looking film. Because God, this film is gorgeous. I mean. The production design, the special effects, a lot of it practical, modelled, hasn't aged a day. And it, it looks brilliant, even now, with, in the world of CGI. We've had so many films that use CGI to create these environments, but Blade Runner still stands out as one of the most beautiful films you're ever going to watch in terms of special effects. It's stunning. Um, I, I love everything about it. Um, it, it hints at so many things, the, the idea that Deckard could be a replicant, he might not be. The whole origami thing at the end with the, the unicorn, how does he know that he had a dream about a unicorn? Unless they're implants. Or is that just coincidence? What, is he a replicant? Are those implants um, in, his, in his brain? Is he, is he really a person or isn't he? That whole thing is, a, is an interesting question to ask yourself. Um, before the new Blade Runner sequel was announced, I was pretty sure he was a replicant. But now, obviously, he can't be because he's in the next movie, unless they bring in something about him, um, that he being a replicant that um, has a longer lifespan, um, but he'd have to have an unbelievably long lifespan. Um, but that, that was always interesting to me. There's so many layers to this film, so many layers to its story and its world, um, and it's got so much more to it um, than just its visuals suggest. It's, n it's no way style over substance. There's so much substance to it. The performances are fantastic, um, and I, I love Blade Runner a significant amount. And I, I do have expectations for the sequel, but I'm trying to keep them muted because I don't want to get overly... I don't want to be overly... Um, expecting it to be amazing. I'm not expecting it to be the film that this is, that Blade Runner is, the original is, because I think that's too much to ask. I'm just, I hope it's a good film. I hope that it doesn't ruin the legacy of Blade Runner. Um, and as I said, Blade Runner is one of my favourite movies of all time and I truly adore it. Um, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, My Favourite Movies video. Uh, if you did, like, subscribe, drop your comments down in the section below. Have you seen Blade Runner? Um, if it is, um, how do you rate it? Do you like it? Do you not? Whatever. Leave your opinions down in the comments section below. What's some of your favourite movies of all time? Um, I'd be really interested to see. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Goodbye.